With market conditions the way they have been the last few years, it's no wonder why there's so many questions about value and equity. If you're like most Americans, you've seen home values rise significantly. New buyers who are financing have to consider how these new values match up to the amount of loan they gonna, they're going to have to have, and current owners may wonder how they factor into the equity. If any of these terms are slightly confusing, you're not alone, but you're in luck because this is going to explain them all. This is the Terms, Tips, and Tricks episode 117, Loan to Value and Equity. Loan to Value is a term you'll likely see when working on buying a home. It may be abbreviated as LTV, and the value is usually represented as a percentage. Your loan to value is how much money you, you owe versus the value of the home. I know no one likes math problems, but let's do a simple word problem. Bob the buyer is purchasing a $250,000 home and has a 10% down payment of $25,000. In this example, he owes $225,000 on the home, which is 90% of its value. His loan to value is 90%, meaning he owes 90% of its value. As the home appreciates in value over the years, which is normal over time, and he makes his regular payments, his LTV goes down and the amount of the home that, uh, that he owns goes up. This is called equity. Equity is the value of the home minus the amount you owe. In our above scenario, Bob had $25,000 in equity when he purchased it. Over time, as the home value rises and he makes more payments, the equity goes up. Most mortgage companies require you to carry PMI, private mortgage insurance, to protect them from loan default until your loan to value hits, 90%, hits 80%. When that happens, you should look at all your options for dropping the PMI. That could save you thousands and allow you to apply it directly to the principal. Note that even though our buyer no longer has the $25,000 down payment in cash or the cash from his monthly payments, he still has the money. It's just tied into the home. This is what makes home ownership and real estate in general such a great investment. It's also a hedge against inflation. When you stay a renter, your cost of housing goes up over time and you retain none of that value. Your landlord does. When you're a homeowner, you lock in the cost of the housing with a monthly mortgage bill that doesn't rise over time. And that is a guaranteed savings plan that eventually leads you to owning your own home. Under normal circumstances, it's sorry, under certain circumstances, it's possible to owe more in your home than its value. And we're going to talk about that next week in ways you can avoid it. Until next time, I'm Chris Whitehurst. Welcome home.